In today's vlog I will tell you all the information about the ship's cranes. There are four cranes in total. I am on board the vessel right now and maybe you will come on board soon or maybe you are just curious. So stay tuned. vessel it has 50,000 dead weight so it's a big vessel and it has four deck cranes cargo cranes they are made by McGregor they have a capacity of 30 tons with an overload up to 35 tons and uh, they are using them for discharging the cargo also you can use it to load cargo but uh, most of the time, the ports that we are arriving at already have cranes and the ship can provide this service in case we are going in a country that do not have cranes inside the port. As you can imagine, when your vessel has its own cranes, it is uh, easier to get hired because you can have access to many other ports so we are happy about that because if the ship gets hired we get paid and of course we want to make our family happy and we want to make money that is why we come to the sea so i am currently on board the ship i want to tell you about the cranes maybe you have uh, in mind to become a seafarer one day or maybe you are just curious how the cranes look like maybe you have seen cranes on board another type of vessel before but i want to show you the cranes that we have on board this bulk carrier like i said they are made by mcgregor this is the most common cranes that you will find on board the most type of vessels these type of cranes are very easy to do maintenance on. You have a, everything in the instruction manual. But uh, once you work one time on McGregor cranes, you will have experience on all of them. Of course, it depends on the crew. If they are doing the proper maintenance on time, just like the maker recommends in the instruction manual. As you can imagine, if nobody is doing maintenance, even on a easy crane like McGregor after a while it will break down and uh, it will be a difficult job for the electrician and also for the second engineer and chief engineer so as long as you are doing the proper maintenance on time there will be no issues it's very easy to maintain very easy to use of course I will attach videos here from the time that we are using it as you can see and uh, this is uh, the vlog that I want to tell you about. I want to show you exactly how the cranes look like on the inside. From the outside you have seen on the TV or maybe you have seen in the port in the city that you are living. But it's easier to see now inside and how it operates and things like that. When I was young I wish that I have seen this type of cranes on a YouTube channel or somewhere before I came on board so this is the reason why I'm doing it now maybe you will come on board do not forget to like this clip and maybe you share it to your friend maybe you have a friend who will come on board the bulk carrier in the near future and he will enjoy this for sure because he will see exactly what he has to deal with so let's uh, let's start the vlog yeah Whenever we are talking about loading operation, in 90% of cases, the port facility will use their own cranes. Like you are seeing now, this is a special operation and usually in Southeast Asia, they will use the ship's crane or it depends if the cargo is in a 
plastic bags, for example, then they will use the ship's cranes. But like I said, in most cases, it will be the port facility with their own cranes. And now let's go inside the cranes. I will not get too technical because I want everybody to enjoy the vlog, but I will give you most details so you understand what these cranes are about. So now we are inside crane number one. Like I said before, all the cranes on board this vessel are the same. So there is no point for me to go in each crane to show you. If I show you number one, this is how number two and number three and number four look like. Everything is the same. They are McGregor, the maker is McGregor. They have the tonnage of 30 tons, but in case of an emergency, in case you have something heavier than 30 tons, you can increase the limit for up to 35 tons. But that is only for emergency cases and you should only use it very, very carefully. The only time I have used this is it was when the, the maintenance crew from, main, from McGregor came on board to change the bearing of the crane because the crane is turning on a bearing if you did not know already and uh, that is when they told me to increase the limit from 30 tons to 35 tons just to test that everything is in good order but you should not increase the limit only for testing and uh, I did that because the team from the maker told me to otherwise if you are making any bullshit you will uh, you can damage the equipment and there will be no warranty so the ship will have to suffer and the company will have to pay a lot of money and they will blame you for that so just be careful do not play with things that you do not fully understand so this is inside the crate number one let me show you the 220 panel this is the electric panel that is supplying the light inside the light outside for the jib and for the cabin uh, also the cabin operator the crane operator in his cabin has a heater uh, and this is the 220 ac supply let me show you a little bit As you can see, very easy, nothing complicated. The main breakers for the 220 are 15 amps. That is more than enough for what they need in this location. As you can see, the light is already on because we will go up on the crane and I will show you each level and then I will show you the cabin of the crane operator and we will discuss a little bit more. So, let's go. Now, we are already on the third floor. As you can see, you have warning posters here and the light switch for the next two floors. There is a little bit of echo in this floor, so I apologize if it sounds a little bit strange. <laughs> there is nothing I can do. So, <clears throat> on this floor, we are on the third floor of the crane, and there are some warning posters around. In case uh, you will be coming on board anytime soon as an engineer or as an electrician, uh, if you are on the deck team, on the bridge, navigational bridge, you have nothing, you have no job here. But if you are one of the ratings who is coming on board, you will also come in the crane. So, the purpose of those warning posters is to inform you that uh, whenever they are operating the crane, you should not be inside 
uh, if you do not have a purpose because the, sh the crane is rotating and the ladders that are on each floor they will change position and they do not have any movement sensors or uh, there is no alarm in here so you can get hurt really easy and also you can uh, you can get confused if you know that you have climbed your way on the left side and now the ladder is on the right side trust me if you have never been inside a ship's crane before you will get confused the first time you are here so it's better to be safe in case you are a cadet and you will come on board for your first time on a bulk carrier do not go on the in the inside the crane during operation if you are an electrical cadet and you are going with your electrical officer that is another story he knows exactly how to be safe and he will uh, he will tell you what to do but if you are alone and especially first time on board please take care and do not go inside the crane while it is being in operation it is dangerous for you so now i have rested a little bit <laughs> i have gained some weight so this uh, climbing is a little bit difficult for me i will have to speak with chief cook to reduce the food intake for me <laughs> so let's continue to the next floors and i will show you what is over there So now we are on the second to last floor. This is where you can see the wire of the crane, the oil tank, and also the boxes for the limit of the crane, for the loofing and for the hoisting. Those are calibrated already. You do not need to touch them very often, but sometimes because of the worn out or maybe some other factor, mechanical factors. The crane will not stay in position, especially when you are putting it to rest after you have finished uh, all the operation with it. And you have to open the box and adjust the arm of the crane so it will stay in a fixed position because as you can imagine, when we are in open sea, there is a very strong wind or typhoons or rains or cyclones or whatever we have in the ocean and you cannot go with the crane outside the vessel it has to be in a rested position which is secure and it's keeping it, it keeping the arm of the crane it's keeping it safe you do not want to damage this this is a very expensive equipment and you have to take care of it so sometimes very very rarely you have to adjust the limit of the arm it stays like this, let's say it stays like this, and you have to adjust it a little bit, just a small amount, you know, not so much. So this is the two boxes that you have to check, loofing and uh, hoisting. Yeah, and now let's go to the last floor. So finally, I have arrived on the last floor of the crane. This is where the motor is. The electric panel let me show you a little bit this is the motor of the crane it's supplied from the panel by 440 AC here you have some more specifications this block is for hoisting this is for loofing and that is the electric panel which is supplying all the equipment that is 440 AC so we are on the last floor there is another one actually but that is on top of the crane itself you have no reason to go there except when you have to go on the on the wires to grease them because the ship is moving all around the world and uh, sometimes it's hot sometimes it's cold and this grease can uh, can be washed away or can be can be frozen 
depending on the weather of the country that we are arriving with our ship. So, once in a while, the deck guys have to go up from here and they have to grease the wires. And now, let's see the cabin of the crane operator. Extinguisher. This is the joystick for the hoisting and for the slewing. This is the control panel for the uh, heating of the cabin, the lighting of the cabin. It also has an emergency stop in case there are any issues. See it there. As you can see, it's very, very small. I will attach here a short clip when the crane operator was using the crane. This is the heater of the cabin. They have a window over there if they want some fresh air. Last time we were in uh, Germany and the crane operator here damaged the window. There is a small clip on the window when you are opening and when you are closing and he he pulled very strong on this one and he broke it so I had to improvise something. That is the purpose of the uh, garbage bag, the plastic bag that I put on the joystick because I don't want any water to leak inside the joystick because that's electrical part and it's dangerous. And also, I had to repair the window there. I put some, uh, some wire and some clip just to be sure that the window is closing because like I said before, the ship is traveling all over the world. We are going sometime in cold area. We are going in hot areas. We are going all across the oceans of the world. And of course, the weather is changing from one hour to another. Sometimes it's raining, sometimes it's cloudy, sometimes it's sunny. And uh, of course, I do not want any rain to come inside this box here. It will damage all the electrical equipment. So I had to improvise something just to fix the window to be, to be sure that there are no issues and there will be no water inside the crane operator boot. And that's about it. It is a very small place. Fortunately, I do not have to be here to use it. I'm only the electrical engineer of the vessel and I come here just to fix the electrical problem and then I go away. But this uh, boot is very small for me. It's claustrophobic actually. <laughs> I suppose you have to be brave to be a crane operator, to work in, on such heights and in such a small place. But. We ha all have to earn our living, you know. Some do it easy, some do it in a difficult way like this. So that's about it with the cranes. I hope you have enjoyed the vlog. Don't forget to like it, please. If you like it, hit that like button, share it to your friends. And if you want to see what I keep posting from the ship about the seaman life, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I will keep posting interesting stuff, how we handle ourselves at sea, how we spend our time, some time will be about the machinery on board and stuff like that. Thank you very much for your attention and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.